Hey folks, today we're going to be painting this beautiful sculpt from CA3D Studios of Millennia from Elden Ring. You can see we're going to start out with a beautiful sculpt that I 3D printed on my Saturn 3 Ultra. Let's get at it. So the first thing we got to do after our print is out of our printer is clean it up. There's going to be little marks, little nubs, things we have to sand off. So I just want to show you two different ways we can do this. We can use a hobby blade and we can scrape away at these little nubs, which is a perfectly good way to do it. Or we can actually take a sand piece of sandpaper here and dip it in some water and do some wet sanding. Now the reason I suggest these two different methodologies is because you don't want to create a lot of dust because resin dust is toxic and you don't want to breathe it in. If you do want to use dry method then you can wear a dust mask so but try those two we're also going to glue any parts together at this point that we know fit together well and also that we want to paint together like the leg and her torso and her upper body we're going to glue that together the next step is make sure we clean off all the dust so i just have this little makeup brush that i use to dust it off and once we have it clear of dust we're going to be priming so you can see here what i do is i mix my own primer I thin some Vallejo primer down with any kind of airbrush, medium or thinner, and here we're going to spray the base. So I actually do primer all the parts with this Vallejo primer, and I'm going to use another primer in this video that you guys haven't seen me use before, so we'll come back to that. So again, we're just covering this base, and look at all them beautiful details. And this is just the base, not even the model, but oh, the details on this model. Look at that armor plating on her shoulder. I love the rough details as an armor modeler I really appreciate this model so going back to the base we're gonna start off with some basalt gray this is a dry brush from ammo and we are going to just dry brush this over top of all the rocks now, this basalt gray has a little bit of a blue hue to it which is really nice just gives it a little bit more color rather than just a normal black and gray and we're just gonna do this over the entire base there are some parts that will be covered up but um, not entirely so Again, you'll see that later, but we're going to do the whole thing. Just to add some more color, we're going to add dark sand in. Again, I like these dry brush paints from Ammo just because they're very thick and very easy to use as a dry brush. Just because they are very thick, they're not really runny at all, and you get a lot of use out of them. Definitely recommend them if you like dry brushing. So we're just going over some highlight areas here. You can see we're not doing the whole thing, just a few edges. And then we're going to come back with light gray. This is a very light gray color as the name suggests, that we're going to go over the very tops of these rocks. This is to do that point of the rocks. Um, again, adding more visual contrast. You can see there's already three different colors in here now that you can visually see if you take the time to, to really look at it, which again adds that visual texture that we want. Now we're just going to keep going over all these edges, and then we're going to switch over to this shade. This Drakenhof Nightshade is like a dark gray, blue, black, blue, again, adds more visual contrast into the, the cracks and whatnot. Then this Reichland flesh shade is a nice brown. So again, adding more visual textures in there. This is just kind of spraying lightly over it. So next I'm going to paint some of these rocks using some random grayish colors that I have in my collection. The only one I actually didn't use, I think was the, the burnt sand one. One of them was too orangish yellow. So I did not use, I only used three of those colors that you saw there. But you can see how it brings out some of the details on the rocks. We just want to pick out these details because these rocks otherwise would get lost in the background. So if we paint them a lighter color than the rest of the rock, the big rock that we're looking at as the base, it'll make them stand out. Now I did go back and dry brush uh, one of the gray colors, I think it was the light gray over top of them just to kind of blend them a little bit more so they weren't so yellow. The next step is to paint the moss that's on this base, which there is some. So we're going to start with orc flesh, which gives it a nice dark base green color. And it's okay if there's a little bit of overspray. We don't need to mask off because it's such a dark thing. So that just gives us our base color. So to be fair, I was actually experimenting at this point with some colors. So this Militarum green, I'm going to go over it again right where I did the orc flesh just to try to add in some more visual texture. But you can probably skip this test if you want to do this yourself. The next step is to use pure green, and I actually use this as a dry brush over the tips of the moss. 
and you'll see I used a smaller dry brush for this because I just wanted to hit the tips. And this again is to add some visual depth. So if we have the dark moss on the bottom, the light moss on top, it makes it look like there's more volume to the moss. And this was the key after a few experiments. Slimy Grime Light Nature Effects by Ammo. When this first gets applied, it looks very olive colored and it looks like pond scum to me to start. And I was a little worried, but I did a little test area and washed it dry and it actually dries perfect. So this looks a little bit brighter than what it actually looks when it's dry. You'll see a little bit later in the video. So coming back with clean bone um, on the piece of cloth that goes on this base. Uh, after I primered it black, I did some dry brushing with this clean bone color, which is pretty much an off-white. Uh, makes a really good zenithal, or in this case, it kind of works like a zenithal. We're also going to bring out the texture of this fabric. And you guys know from watching my other tank videos how much I love Rub Brown because that's our tiger, well, not tiger, but the panther tank interior, German tank interior. So I painted it this color because I really like this color, and it turned out great. Just a beautiful red fabric. And this is going to look great on this base. Now, I am going to come back with this Berserker's Blood Shade which is a nice shade color from Citadel that's like a purplish red. We're going to go in these creases to kind of give it a little bit more depth, visual depth. It just turned out great. Look at how uh, that slimy green dried to a nice green. We got some great visual texture on the moss. And then when we add that red, that rut brown fabric in there, oh man, those colors just pop. Everything is popping on this base. I love it. So there's a few arrows that are going to go inside that piece of fabric. I'm going to paint these the way I typically paint wood. So again, this might not be new for anybody to my channel. If you've been here before, I paint with old wood. Then I use brown for German dark yellow. And that gives us this nice brown woodish color. And it brings out the grain because it is an enamel wash. So again, if you guys have seen any of my tank build videos, you'll know that's how I do wood. Yeah, it's just a tried and true method. So next is this acrylic steel color from Vallejo. There's a little band on this arrow. I would assume it was made of steel. And then we're going to come back with Garrick Sewer. This is a contrast paint from Citadel. And contrast paints are nice over top of any light color. Like this arrow with painted wood. We're going to go over top of the feathers. And it, well, it makes it look like a brown feather. And we have some nice visual contrast there. It looks really good. Without any washes or anything, then we can attach those to the base and I think it looks really good we just definitely have some color variation on this base really beautiful these guys did a wonderful job adding detail to the base outside of the sculpt that we're going to get into here shortly there is one other thing we need to add well technically two but we're going to start with this gloss black base and this is a lacquer um, you can get all clads but a stand is the new version of it they're the same thing and then we're going to use steel from a stand this is the first time I got to use these lacquer metallics, and man, I love these things. This is my new way of doing metals, if I can airbrush them, of course. As you can see, I put this steel over top of a gloss black primer. I didn't show me painting them gloss black because they were already black, so black on black wouldn't really have shown up too well in the video. But I did go over these metal parts with, with the steel color, so I also had these steel chains that she wears separate, so I took care of those while I had steel. Next, I'm coming back with some old rust to paint the handle of these swords. And these swords go into the base. So that's why you see, like, they look a little weird on the bottom. They actually slide into the base. It's actually a key slot. So, again, painting old rust. Look how nice that looks. The texture on that, like a leather look, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. So then we're going to use medium gray. And we're going to spray that onto the other fabric bits that are actually on the sword so we're going to mask everything off of course and spray over this medium gray now we're not going to leave it a gray we're actually going to add some more color variation into this because it is a fabric so starting with clean bone I'm just going to do a dry brush over that it's kind of might seem s silly for me to do a, a what you would think is a, ze a zenithal but that's not really what I'm doing. I'm just trying to add a little bit of extra white color in there over top of the gray to make it like a highlight. And then I'm taking this skeleton horde from Citadel and spraying it over top of those colors to kind of give it like a dirty look. It's a really nice way of giving it an off-white dirty look on that cloth. 
for this sword that's been stuck in the ground. I wouldn't imagine it'd be very clean sitting in there. So we actually had two of those swords. I did the same process on both of them. I think they turned out really nice. And that's the base. So now we're going to move on to the sculpt. So starting with polished brass, remember I said I really like these A stands for metallics and gosh, this is beautiful. So this is the leg that we glued together in the beginning. This is her left leg. It's all a piece of armor. So polished brass is a great color to use for gold. And that's what we're doing here. Now the nice thing about this A stand is it sprays on very thin coats and you can see how you don't lose any detail and it's so shiny and beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Here's her shoulder piece. Like I said, it's it's gonna take a couple coats, but it dries very fast and it sticks really well. This stuff is super hard when it's done. You can handle it. You're not gonna strip it off or you know, touch it and the paint will come off. It's absolutely beautiful. And then her helmet. So there's quite a bit of the gold color in this figure, but I, I just, that's why I chose it really. I love the metallics. I wanted to try these A stands out. And as an armor modeler, I love how distressed her different armor pieces look. We also have her right arm and her sword, right hand. It all goes into her arm. Her entire right arm is, is, is bronze. So now at this point, we can paint the lower portion of her cloth robe that she's wearing, if you will. So we're going to take this nice Rust Tracks brown color. So this has got a darker brown color. I did do a zenith all over this piece first. It was just difficult to film because it's a very odd piece, very big. This is a 1-6 scale, so it's a very large character we're making here. So painting over with the rust tracks. Then I'm going over with Agrax Earthshade, which is another dark brown from Citadel. And I'm putting this in all the recesses. Again, just to add that visual texture and depth. We're going to do that on the front. We're also going to do that on the back side of this. And we can see all the creases in this bottom part of her, maybe call it a dress maybe, that she's wearing. And, and this bottom half is just a really nice dark brown color. Now, we also have a gold piece. I don't think it's a belt buckle necessarily, but it kind of fits in that spot. So we're going to paint this piece gold after masking things off. It's the same polished brass I used earlier for A stand. And then I taped off the entire thing minus these chains so this is the same chains that I painted earlier with steel but these are actually attached to the edges of the bottom of this dress so I painted that with the a stand steel color and again taking this tape off you can see how that just pops those steel colors just the metal colors from a stand man I am impressed I know it's all clad rebranded but man is it gorgeous um, it's the first time I got to use them and I absolutely enjoyed it so this is what we have so far. I have her bottom, bottom half. Um, I am going to go over the flesh tones that you see there in just a moment, but I wanted to at least show you guys kind of the progress so far. So first though, before we do the flesh, we have to do a zenithal on the biggest part of the model, which is her torso and the bottom part of her dress and her one arm. So we're going to do a zenithal to make sure we get those nice highlights on the raised edges, because this is going to be the central focal point. So I'm going to use clay brown. This is just a lighter brown color. And again, folks might recognize this. I believe this is the color I used on my World War I tank. So again, just a lighter brown color. We're going to go over that zenithal. Very light coverage, just so we don't ruin that, that zenithal. Essentially take advantage of that zenithal highlight that we did. So we get nice, bright, raised parts and nice, dark... Uh, indentations look how beautiful that is and again just a light brown and that separates the two different parts of her dress that we have so onto the flesh we're going to use the blue violet and an airbrush medium of your choice you can use whatever you want to thin it down but whenever you use Vallejo paints to airbrush you're going to have to thin them down they won't come right out of your airbrush out of the bottle they're too thick which is great for brushing but not great for airbrushing so thin them down and we're going to use the purple as like a zenithal to a point so any of your highlight areas you want to use this purple color you can use pink as well as you might have seen in some of my other videos you can use pink that works just as well the point is you're just trying to get like this undertone for the flesh so when you have like shadowy areas or transition areas you have uh, this purplish underneath so the transparent red that I'm going to show you guys here again this is from Vallejo the nice thing is this transparent red does not need to be thinned down. This is a good right out the bottle. You're going to use this as like a reverse zenithal. So come in from the bottom, 
cover up the black areas the shadow areas that we did before and this creates like a transition between the purple and the red and this will help cover up those shadows you can still leave a few shadows if there's dark areas that's perfectly fine but this red just makes it look a little bit more natural in uh, in the light if you're trying to recreate fake shadows of course so we do all those shadowed areas with this transparent red so that's the bottom of her chest back of her arm then we're going to switch to this natural flesh color now this natural flesh we're going to again come in from the top as if we're doing a zenithal highlight from the top so this is how we're going to take advantage of those under coats that we made just a moment ago and we're going to essentially apply this on the purplish areas and it's going to create a nice natural looking flesh tone and leave the shadows intact that we made over the last two passes this natural fletch is a great color for anything that's supposed to look human like there are other flesh tones in that same set if you want to check them out from Vallejo there is a whole set and I'm actually gonna be using quite a bit of it today so this fairy flesh I use as a highlight and this is as high as I'm going on the highlights sometimes there, there is a highlight flesh that I use but in this case we're just going to use fairy flesh here on her chest because really there's not many areas of flesh on this model that are like out in the open right we have her legs are underneath her dress her head is underneath her helmet so the chest is really the only thing that's exposed so the next piece is medium flesh and this is what you essentially use to blend the dark parts and the light parts of your flesh it's just a nice orangish tone you can also use it in the shadowy areas if you want to make it look like it's just uh, a, a shadowed flesh it, it just looks really nice almost looks like dark flesh um, but again it, it just blends so nice between your shadows and your natural flesh look here we can see on her neck you see how there's shadows underneath her chin and her jawline just like it would look I mean look at anybody standing around you and you'll see that same kind of shadow so here I use this again to cover up the shadows now this is her thigh so it's going up inside her dress which is why there's a shadow at the top so I'm gonna use this pale flesh because this character if you understand a little bit about her story she's got this rotten flesh on her so I'm gonna use pale flesh which is like a grayish flesh color to go over these rotten parts and this is just step one but it's toning down that natural flesh look so it doesn't look so nice and alive. Then we're going to use malefic flesh which is like a purplish brown over the same areas too and th what this is doing is it's giving us a little bit more visual contrast specifically on the rotten areas. So we still have some natural flesh mixed in there but we add in this malefic and pale flesh and we get these rottish kind of colors. I also use it on the back side of that arm just to make it look again like it's more rotting flesh I used ash black to add a little bit more shadow here as well just because specifically where this leg goes into the armor I wanted to add some more shadow there same thing on this arm again I'm just trying to add more of that rot look so I took Reichlin flesh shade going back to the dress that she's wearing and I put this into the folds and whatnot now that I have the flesh tones done we can continue on this dress of course which is why you see me bouncing around so we're going in all the folds with that flesh shade which is again is just a nice contrast it blends so well so then I masked everything off and I went back to my favorite my new favorite a stand polished brass to do these gold parts that are on her belt if you want to call it that then I mix these three colors I don't remember the exact ratio but let's just say it was like 60% highlight skin 20% clay brown and 20% white and the point is I'm trying to make an off-white to paint this inner part of her dress her I don't know if that what that thing is called I'm a guy it's a piece of clothing that women wear underneath their main bit of clothing and I wanted to give it a different color just so it stands out so I gave it this off-white color I think it looked really nice I'm gonna come back and wash this in just a moment but first while we have this color mixed, we're going to do all of her little tassels, if we want to call them that, the same color. I don't know if they're tassels, whatever those loops are. Do them in the same color, and I think it looked really nice. Matches really well. I did come back with Skeleton Horde. This is what I was saying about the 
a little bit of a wash. So I kind of used Skeleton Horde like a wash just to bring out the lines that are on this piece of clothing here. And you can see I use a very, very thin brush, just trying to bring them lines out a little bit. And again, I think it turned out really nice. Give it a little bit extra depth. So then the next step is to take some light rust. This is like a nice reddish orange color and do these belts that she has going on. This color looked really nice. It is cool how we can use rust tones and colors to paint a model. You don't even realize these these naturally occurring tones match our the clothing that our characters are wearing. Pretty cool. So I got these light rust on all of this and again I think it turned out really nice. Plenty of colors and visual texture to look at. So I still wasn't happy with the way the rotted flesh looks so I went back and I, I tried this dark wash from ammo on it and I actually really liked how this turned out. Now I didn't capture it but after I very carefully applied this dark wash and all those cracks of her skin I did come back with some enamel thinner and cleaned up just the edges so you didn't have the stains and whatnot outside of the areas where they should have been. I also did do her leg after I had it attached and I thought it looked really good. That, that dark wash really brought out that rot look that I wanted. So here we can put her together. We have her whole torso, legs and everything together and this is looking like a beautiful model. We can also attach her right arm at this point because that's all ready to go. Have all the nice brass parts along with her hand and you see me applying some accelerant for the super glue so it sticks a little bit faster. I love using the needle there for that. So now I'm going to finish up her half of her portrait because that's only half we can see and I started with some black just to make sure there was a nice gap there in between her lips we can see that and then I use reddish flesh for her lips reddish flesh comes in that same flesh pack from Vallejo and it's perfect for just doing natural looking lips I just think this looks so nice and Vallejo paints are by far my favorite so far for painting uh, with a brush just because they thin down real nice up, and they just flow really nice where you want them to. I really do enjoy them for brush painting. And then we put her helmet on and we can see. One thing I didn't like though is I wanted some better shadows. So I'm going to show you. I took this ash black shader like I used earlier and applied it. I didn't capture me applying it but you can see how I just applied it there around the edges to make it look like there's a little more shadow underneath her helmet. So coming back I have some rut brown to put on her hair. Now, I don't want her hair to match the color of the fabric on the base and also what's going to be her cape here in a moment. So I'm just starting with rut brown as a base though because it's just such a nice color. Then we're going to add in this red brown shadow in all of the recessed portions and underneath. So this is just adding more depth without just having it be black. So then I took red brown light and I did a lot of the top areas, like the highlight areas if you will. It's kind of like a blended highlight coat if you will. Again, just adding more visual texture. Then I came back with this red. Now I diluted this probably 60%, so like 60% thinner, 40% paint to just give it like a glaze of red to highlight it. And this is because you can see how, how much it's changing. I, I just did, again, didn't want it rough brown. I didn't want it to blend in. I wanted it to stand out. I just didn't want it to be like cherry bright red. So it's, it's like a glaze of red over top. And I was really happy with how that all turned out. So once we have the hair done, we can move on to the last part, which is the cape. Now this cape is massive. It's the same size as her. And I printed it all in one piece. So I did primer it in black and then I'm going over it just like I did with the fabric before kind of giving it like a zenithal with a dry brush. I use the same clean bone that I did earlier. And you can see how that white really brings out the fabric look and gives you that contrast between the high points and the low points. And this just works so well for giving us that visual texture we want. And I'm also gonna do these little fur that she has on top as well. Again, just highlighting that for future use when we do come back and paint that with some different colors. So as I mentioned, we're gonna use rut brown because this is the same color as the fabric that's on the base and I just love this look for her cape. And it's really gonna bring the gold out that we're gonna paint here in a moment on that air tree that's on the back of her cape. So again, painting it in rut brown. And once we have it all painted in rut brown, we're gonna come back and we're gonna add some more visual texture because we like visual texture on this channel. So here we can see the inside 
painted a little bit lighter so we have the darker tones and on the outside it's a little bit brighter so we have the brighter tones so while I have this ready I'm gonna paint the top here with our cream of ice that we've used before on our tanks used on interiors of German tanks and I think this turned out really nice with that little bit of a zenithal and the little bit of the dark parts that were in the bottom it just gives it a nice texture depth with that white on top. Then I came back with the same ash black ink that I like to use from ammo and gave us a little bit of a shadow contrast between the red part of the cape and the white part that is the fur. I just thought that would make the fur pop a little bit more and again add more depth to the model. So coming back to the cape on the bottom we're going to use Berserker Bloodshade just as we did before on the piece of fabric for the base and we're going to go through all of the little indentations, the valleys of the cape if you will and again just add that visual depth to it it's such a nice purplish red color that works really well then i got to use this vallejo gold this is the first i actually used vallejo's gold and uh, again i was very happy with how vallejo's paint worked with a little bit of water a few drops of water you can thin down vallejo paint and it flows right off your paintbrush really easy to use and i was actually impressed with how the metallic you look some folks will note that acrylics uh, in the metallic range don't always look all that great but I think this turned out really well and it didn't really take many coats to, to put all this paint down it was time consuming to fill this whole thing out but I think the results were well worth it and it looks absolutely beautiful now attaching the cape and this is by far the heaviest part of the model we got that down then we can attach her head with her hair and we're ready to reveal this thing. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you guys so much. Alright folks, that's going to do it for me for today. Thank you guys again for watching. If you like what you saw, please like, leave a comment. If you want to see more content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future content. If you're looking to support my channel a little bit more, I'd appreciate it. You can check out my Patreon where I post almost daily updates from my workbench. You can see all these HD photos of my builds between my tanks and my figures. You can get in contact with me as well if you'd like i appreciate it so much thank you all and i hope to see you back here soon with my next tiger video